Timothy, the fourth chapter. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Last week, Brother Ball was here and he preached for us. I enjoyed that. And I think the week before that, we were home because of the weather. So I hope you haven't forgot where we were at. But we started out a few weeks ago talking about being steadfast. I think the first sermon we preached on this was on the last day in December. We were talking about New Year's resolutions and we were talking about how that people will make decisions to do things. And we said how that, the, it, that uh, it would behoove us all if the decision or the resolution or the resolve or the determination that we have was centered around Christ instead of self. So we were talking about, and I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time reviewing this morning, but I do want to hit on it to refresh your memory. And for those out there who may not have tuned in or, or heard the, uh, watched the video or heard the video. But we've been talking about being determined, being steadfast, being resolved that no matter what happens, that we're going to press on. That no matter what happens, that we're going to hold on. That no matter how many times we fall down, we're not going to give up, but we're going to get up. And we're going to press on. Amen? That no matter what others do, we've made our decision to follow the Lord. That no matter what the backslidden church does, we've made our decision to serve the Lord. That no matter what our family does, we've made our decision to serve the Lord. And we started, I believe, with Joshua. You don't have to turn there because I want you to stay there in Timothy. Joshua 24 and 15 where Joshua stood before all of the congregation of Israel and said, you can choose today who you want to serve. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Amen? You can, you can choose to go back into Egypt. You can choose to worship the, the, the gods of Egypt. Or you can choose to worship God. That's up to you. But no matter what you decide, no matter what your decision is, we're going to serve the Lord. Amen? And we talked how Joshua took that firm, steadfast faith that he had. And he said, we're not going to back down from it, we're, no matter what others do. And we talked about Daniel, the third chapter, where the Hebrew children were brought before the king because everyone else was bowing down to the idol of the king. The king had set up a great idol, and whenever the music started happening, the command was that everyone was to bow down and to worship. And all of us know this. We learned this in Sunday school. That all of them were to bow down and begin to worship. Well, everybody did, except for three old boys. And some tattletales, long tongues, came and told the king, hey, these guys ain't doing what you said. So he brings the king brings them before him and he says, you're going to do this or else. And the Hebrew children stood there with the backbone of the Holy Ghost and said, we choose what else. Amen? We choose the else. We're not going to bow down to you. They said, our God is able, our God will, but even if he don't, we have made up our mind, amen, regardless of what happens to us, regardless of the circumstance, we're going to serve the Lord. Because they had made a decision, because they were steadfast in their faith, in their God, amen, because they knew that no matter what happened, it didn't change God. And if they held on to him, if they held on to their faith, that he would see them through regardless. We have this distorted view that if we don't get the victory in this life, somehow we left defeated. No, if you leave this life holding on to the hand of Jesus, if you leave this life with your faith in Jesus, you didn't lose, you won. Amen? Too many times we say, well, somebody lost their fight with cancer. No, they won if they knew Jesus. Amen? They won because they're in a much better place now than they were. If we'll keep the faith, if we'll remain steadfast, if we'll get a bulldog grip on our faith, in Him and be determined not to let go. We read about Nehemiah. I encourage you to go home and read the entire book of Nehemiah because it is good. Amen? I skipped over Noah. We talked about Noah before we got to Nehemiah. How that God spoke to him and told him to build an ark. Had never been such a thing before. So I want you to build an ark because there's a flood coming. And he was ridiculed and he was mocked. He was made fun of. But do you remember... Still the hammer rang. He never stopped. He never lost his faith in God because regardless of what others did, and listen, everybody rejected it except his family. He preached for 120 years and only him, his wife, children and their wives got on the boat. Only his family got on the boat. Amen? Because his faith was steadfast in God. 
You might say, well, why did God choose Noah? How did he find grace in the eyes of the Lord? Well, go over there and read it. When the Lord said, Noah, you do this. Guess what the Bible says? And Noah did according to the word that the Lord had spoken unto him. Because he was obedient to the voice of the Lord. Because he was faithful. in his, He was steadfast in his faith in his God. It wasn't because Noah was some big righteous spiritual giant that was perfect. He was just a man like you and me. But he had a steadfast faith in his God. And we talked about Nehemiah and how that all through the book of Nehemiah, you will find that when Nehemiah was resolved and determined to rebuild the wall and to do the work of the Lord, that the enemy tried his best to stop him. He ridiculed, he made fun. They even sent papers to him saying, hey, come down here and let's go talk and reason this thing out. And Nehemiah said, I don't have time for that. There's a work that has to be done. So his faith was steadfast in his God. Now this morning I want us to look at the Apostle Paul. A greater conversion you will not find in all of the Word of God. And God would baffle the minds of the religious crowd when He would choose Paul to deliver the message of the cross, the meaning of the new covenant, to the Jew, to the Gentile, to the church. He would choose him to do so. He already had Peter. He already had James. He already had John. But He chose this man who went from a persecutor to a preacher and I'm not sure exactly why he did things the way he did them. I've got an idea of what I think. I think that maybe he chose Paul because Paul was the greatest example of the power of what the cross can do. The greatest example of what Jesus' blood... When, when Paul said old things pass away and all things become new, he knew what he was talking about. Amen? <laughs> Hallelujah. Because he went from enemy number one to the church to enemy number one to the devil. So the apostle Paul knew what he was talking about about being a new man, a new creation in Christ Jesus. And I think maybe that's why the Lord chose Paul to have him bring the message of the cross because he was the one that maybe at that time had experienced it to a death. Now, Peter was a fisherman. Now he was probably a foul mouth. You know how fishermen are. He was a dirty old sinner, but he wasn't out here killing people, killing Christians. Amen? And some of the others that were that were uh, fishermen and you know tax collectors, and they were considered worse than fishermen though. But he chose Paul at the time Saul of Tarsus. And he said, I'm going to take this man that is a persecutor of the church because he saw somebody, he, someone he could use for his glory and for his good. And he chooses this man who was the persecutor, a killer of, church, of, the, of Christians of the church. Didn't choose Peter, didn't choose James or John, but Paul to preach the message of the cross to the Jew and to the Gentile. And we find here in 2 Timothy where I told you to turn the 4th chapter, the 6th verse. And mom was asking me last night, she brought this up as when I called her to tell her good night. She asked me about Paul and his death. And we find these words that Paul had here in 2 Timothy 4 and 6. This is really close to his departure. This is really close to the time that he would be put to, get, put to death under Nero's rule for his, for his testimony of Jesus. And this is the, these are the words that he spoke. 2 Timothy 4 and 6, For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. Listen to what he says. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. And last but certainly not least, and the reason for the other two, is I have kept the faith. Amen? Amen? Listen to me. You will never fight the good fight of faith. You will never finish your course until you first keep the faith. Because if you give up the faith, if you, if you, if, if you, uh, if you, if you lay your faith aside or you allow things in your life to cause you to depart or to forsake your faith, you will never finish your course. You will never be able to fight the good fight of faith. He said, I fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Now that word kept there means to watch. In the Greek it means to guard. It means to keep an eye upon. And this one right here is what I like the best. It means to hold captive. <laughs> what it really means is to get a hold of it and no matter what devil, no matter what demon, no matter what religious spirit that comes along 
tries to take your faith away from you, hold on to it with a bulldog grip and don't let go. No matter how many times you fall, don't let go. No matter how many trials there are, don't let go. No matter how many storms you face, don't let go. And that's what we've been talking about. We've been talking about being steadfast unto the end. We've been talking about not letting our faith go. We've been talking about keeping our faith in Jesus regardless of what's going on around us. And there will be plenty of things that goes on around you. As long as you're in this life, forget what the guys said in the mega churches this morning. Everything's not going to come up roses. Everything is not going to go your way. You're not going to be, everything you, you touch is not going to turn to gold. Amen? But if you'll hold on to your faith, if you'll remain steadfast and determined that no matter what happens, I'm going to hold on to my faith in Him. No matter who comes or who goes, I'm going to hold on to my faith in Him. And Paul was such a man. You will never fight the good fight you will never finish your course unless you first keep the faith. Unless you first, unless you first hold on to your faith with all that you have. And listen to me, Paul didn't get to this place because his life had been easy. You know, sometimes people try to tell you about your situation when they haven't faced it. Amen. Or whenever you might look at their life and you might think, well, they've never went through something like this. That cannot be said of the Apostle Paul. He did not get to this place to the end of his journey and be able to testify the, what a great testimony that is. I can't think of a better thing I'd like to say on my deathbed than I have fought a good fight, I have finished my course, and glory to God, I have kept the faith. And he got to this place by going through trials, by dealing with the world, the flesh, and the devil, just like we have to deal with, but his faith remained steadfast. When we read where he wrote in Hebrews 3 and 14, for we are, we are made partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast unto the end. If we have a made up mind that no matter how many times I fall, I'm going to get up and go on. No matter how many times I mess up, I'm going to take that to the great fixer upper and let him fix it. If I fall a thousand times, I'm going to get up a thousand and one and press on. Hallelujah. Don't lose hold of your faith. Don't lose faith in Him. Hold on to your faith. And we read this scripture whenever we began this series of messages. 1 Corinthians 15 and 58. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. This was a man who knew what he was talking about. This was a man who had been tried and tested. This was a man who not only did he have to deal with, you know how you are. If you've done something bad in your past, the devil likes to torment your mind with it, don't he? There's no way that we can not think that there were not times that the enemy would come to Paul and say, you know, who, you know what you've done. You stood by and gave the command to stone Stephen, God's servant. Paul, what do you think you're doing? And I'm sure he faced some of that with, from his own flesh. I'm sure he faced some of that from his own brethren, who at the beginning, no doubt, didn't trust him because he was enemy number one of the church. Turn with me this morning to 2 Corinthians 11 and 23, and let's look at some of the things that Paul had went through. 2 Corinthians, the 11th chapter. And we're going to pick this up in the middle of, the, of what he's saying here because the point that I want to make is what he's about to tell us he had been through. 2 Corinthians 11 and 23. You might be thinking today, well, that's easy for Paul to say that he fought a good fight, that he finished his course, that he kept the faith. That's easy for him to say, well, let's see. Let's see how easy the life of the Apostle Paul was. He wouldn't fit in with those get-rich-quick preachers of today. He wouldn't be able to go to those big conventions that they have your best life now. Because most of what he wrote in the New Testament, guess where he wrote it from? He didn't write it from his mansion on the hill. He wrote it from a prison cell. And we find him here giving some of the things that, listing some of the things that had happened to him. 2 Corinthians 11 and 23. Are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. I am more. He said, In laborers more abundant, 
in stripes above measure, in prisons more frequent, in deaths oft. Listen. Of the Jews, five times received I forty stripes, save one. Thrice was I beaten with rods, once was I stoned. Thrice I suffered shipwreck, a night and a day I have been in the deep. Now some of these might make you feel if you're out there listening to me and you're not at church this morning because Sister Longtongue looked at you funny. These may make you feel like your reason for not going to church is a little petty. Your reason for giving up on God is a little petty. We'll pick it up here. In journeyings often, in perils of water, in perils of robbers, in perils of my own countrymen, in perils by the heathen, in perils of the city, in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren. Listen, in weariness, in painfulness, in watchings often, in hunger and thirst, in fastings often, in cold and in nakedness. Beside those things that are without, he said, that which cometh upon me daily, the care of all the churches. Yet this man, through all of this, mark that. Go back and read it. Compare the struggles that we face to the fact that he said that he had been thrice beaten with rods, that he had received five times 40 stripes, save one of the Jews, that he had suffered a shipwreck, that he had been in journeyings often, and that he had been in the perils of water, and the list goes on and on. The hunger and the thirst and the nakedness and the cold. Yet he endured to the end. When he got to the end of his journey, in spite of the trials, he still said, I have finished my course. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. No matter what has went on in my life, there was one sure foundation. Everything else might have been shaken. Everything else might have been moved. Everything else might have crumbled and fell apart around me. But glory to God, I have kept my faith in Him, knowing that He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. If I'm on the mountain this morning and I'm glorifying God, then tomorrow when I'm in the valley, I should still be glorifying God because He's still the same. He does not change. I have kept the faith. Amen? I have kept the faith. Listen to what he says. Same book, 4th chapter. Turn back a few pages to 2 Corinthians, the 4th chapter, the 8th verse. Let's see what he says here. 2 Corinthians 4 and 8. I want you to see this this morning. I want you to see this this morning. I wish you kids had a Bible in front of you this morning. Because I want you to see this this morning. I don't just want you to hear the preacher say it. I want you to read it for yourself. I want you to get it down inside of you. And realize that life's not going to be easy. But that at the end, you can testify that you finished your course. And you fought a good fight. If you'll keep the faith in Him. I want you to realize today, there are going to be times that you face struggles. But if you'll keep your faith in Jesus, everything's going to be alright. I want you to realize today, you're going to find yourself in the midst of storms that seem like they're going to overwhelm you. But when the smoke clears, and the dust settles, and the thunder stops... If you've kept your faith in Jesus, you're going to be victorious on the other side. Listen to what he says. 2 Corinthians 4 and 8. I could preach this morning. I somebody help me. We are troubled on every side. Can I preach a little bit? Thank you. I need you to let me. Hallelujah. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. We are persecuted, but not forsaken. We are cast down, but not destroyed. Sadly, for most church people today, we would have to reword it to say we are troubled on every side. I give up. Yet, and we are, we are perplexed, so I ain't going to go on no more. We are persecuted, so God don't love me. We are cast down so I'm just going to lay here and die hallelujah but no Paul said we are troubled on every side but we're not distressed because we're going to keep the faith we are perplexed but we're not in despair because we're going to keep the faith we are persecuted but we're not forsaken because we're going to keep the faith we are cast down but not destroyed because we're going to keep the faith hallelujah our God is bigger than the storm our God is bigger than the giant our God is bigger than us Amen. I have kept the faith. I have kept the faith. 
my faith remains steadfast in Him. Are there, do, I, do I never doubt? Of course I doubt. I'm human. Do I never struggle? Of course I struggle. I'm human. Amen? Hallelujah. But my faith in Him remains intact because He is God. That's why Paul would write in 1 Corinthians 2 and 2. You don't have to go there, but you can write it down. But this is the backbone or one of the foundational teachings of the message of the cross. 1 Corinthians 2 and 2, he said, For I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and Him crucified. When the Sadducees and the Pharisees and the religious crowds were trusting in their religious works and their, and their, their, their sacraments and their ceremonies, Paul said, I will keep my faith in the Lord. When the Jews had, that had been saved began to turn back and go into the law and thought they could make themselves holy and righteous by doing this, 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 and this, and it would make them better and holier, Paul said, I tried that. It, this, he was a keeper of the law before, but he was also a killer of the brethren. Amen? Hallelujah. Paul said, I tried that, but I'll keep my faith in the Lord. Hallelujah. Of the Jews, five times received I forty stripes, save one, but I kept the faith. Three times was I beaten with rods, but I kept the faith. Once was I stoned. Do you remember that? Stoned him. They had to put him in a basket and let him down on the outside of the wall to get him out of the city. Once was I stoned, but I kept the faith. I was shipwrecked three times. Gave up. Had a pity party and all. Kept the faith. Amen. A night and a day I was spent in the deep, but I kept the faith. In journeys often, but I kept the faith. In perils of water, but I kept the faith. In perils of robbers, but I kept the faith in perils of my own countrymen but I kept the faith in perils of the heathen but I kept the faith in perils in the city but I kept the faith in perils in the wilderness but I kept the faith are you getting the point this morning in perils in the sea but I kept the faith in perils among false brothers but I kept the faith amen that's one of the hardest ones that's one of the hardest ones. It's like King David whenever he said, and I'm paraphrasing, it wasn't, it wasn't uh, the stranger or the enemy that stabbed me in the back. It was the one that I took counsel with. It was the brother that I fellowshiped with. So that's one of the hardest things to get through. Don't let what the church does stop you from holding on to Jesus. Amen. Say, I can't go to church. There's too many hypocrites there. Well, go on. One more ain't going to hurt nothing. Amen. Hallelujah. Let that sink in. Hallelujah. I kept the faith. I kept the faith. In weariness and painfulness, I kept the faith. In watchings often, I kept the faith. In hunger and thirst, I kept the faith. In fastings often, I kept the faith. In cold and nakedness, I kept the faith. Now, repeat after me. I kept the faith. Oh, come on, y'all. Repeat after me. I kept the faith. Okay, now if you fix it, you fix it to help me preach. When I go like this, you say, I kept the faith. Amen? Of the Jews, five times I received 40 stripes, save one. Oh, come on now. Thrice was I beaten with rods. Hallelujah. I was stoned, but what happened? I kept the faith. Amen. I've been through some storms in my life. I kept the faith. I've been through some... Glory to God, I've been through some sickness in my life. Oh, come on, somebody help me preach this morning. I've been through some times when somebody stabbed me in the back and talked about me, but what did I do? Oh, I didn't give up. I didn't sit down. I guarded my faith. I held it captive. Glory to God. So many today have laid their faith to the side whenever things would come up or going seeking after the things of the world. Help us, Lord, this morning to get a bulldog grip on it that no matter who tries to take it away, I'm going to keep the faith. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I kept the faith. I think y'all's about to get it. Amen. In hunger and thirst, what to do? I 
In fastings, what I do. When I was in prison, what I do. Oh, I could preach this morning. When Paul and Silas was in prison in the Philippian jail, and at midnight, uh, did they give up? No, what they do? Oh, they kept the faith. Uh, hallelujah. You want to you disturb the devil's camp this morning? You want to confuse him? Then let him throw everything he's got at you and sit back on his wicked throne and say, now I'll hear him complain. Yet out of the midst of the rubble, he hears you saying, nearer my God to thee. I will cling to the old rugged cross. I will not let go of my Savior. Hallelujah. I could preach this morning. I kept the faith. I kept the faith. I stumbled and I messed up. But I kept the faith. Amen. I fell down a thousand times. But I kept the faith. And I got up. And I went on. I kept the faith. Amen. I fought the good fight of faith. I stayed the course. Because I kept the faith. Amen. I fought a good fight. I finished my course because I kept the faith. I'm getting ready to close this morning. Turn with me to Revelation. Revelation, the second chapter in the eighth verse. I want to read to you the words that the Lord speaks to the church of Smyrna. Hallelujah. Revelation 2 and 8. Revelation 2 and 8. When you have it, say amen. 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 And unto the angel of the church of Smyrna write, These things saith the first and the last, which was dead and is alive. Listen to this. Birds are worshiping the Lord. I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. And I know the blasphemy of them, which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. Fear none of these things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison. Wonder why you don't hear any of these megachurch preachers preach this this morning. That, it might cause some people, to, it might upset their apple cart. The devil shall cast some of you into prison, that you may be tried. You shall have tribulation ten days. But then what he, look what he says. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. He that hath an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. He that overcometh shall not be hurt of the second death. He was telling the church of Smyrna, you're going to face some tribulation. You're going to face some poverty. You're going to face some persecution. But be faithful. Keep the faith unto the end. Keep the faith unto the end. Matthew 25 and 21, the Bible says, His Lord shall say unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. I want that to be said of me. Now I know today, I want to hear those words from the Lord, but also, if the Lord tarries long enough and I'm dead and in the ground, I hope that people will look back at the time that I had on this life. And the thing that I want them to say the most about me is not that he was a great preacher. I gave that up a long time ago. Not that he was a great singer. Not that he was this, this, and this, but that he kept the faith. He was faithful. He was faithful. I told Reese if she had enough money, put that on my tombstone. That he fought a good fight. That he finished his course. That he kept the faith. Amen. What a testimony this morning. What a testimony this morning. Amen. If we'll keep the faith. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. And then if we'll do that, we will hear, well done. Thou good and perfect? Didn't say that, did it, Mama? Thou good and sinless? Didn't say that, did it? Thou good and righteous? 
thou good and faithful servant. Amen. Lord, help us to be more faithful to you. Amen. I know people ain't never missed a day of work. They ain't been in church in six months. So we're faithful to things. Amen. We just need to make sure we're faithful to the right things first. Amen. Then everything else will fall into place. Faithful. The Bible calls Moses faithful. Was Moses perfect? Go read his, about his life over there. <laughs> he got mad. He got angry. He did something the Lord told him not to do. But the Lord called him faithful. Amen. He was faithful. He didn't give up on God. If you don't give up on God, listen, God ain't going to give up on you, so don't give up on Him. Amen. The Bible calls Abraham faithful. And we see several times in Abraham's life where he, where he messed up. He did something he wasn't supposed to do, but he kept his faith in God. If you're waiting to be perfect and sinless and this, you know, highfalutin, I'm not like you. And you might as well give up on it. Because there ain't never been one sinless and perfect. And that's Jesus Christ. Amen. But the most important thing is, are you faithful? Are you faithful? If we will live our life with our faith set like flint toward Calvary's cross in Jesus Christ and what He has done and not what we're able to do and who He is and not who we are, then we too will be able to stand at the end of our race and say, I have kept the faith. It ain't been perfect. Lord, it ain't been pretty. But I kept the faith. <laughs> Amen. I kept the faith. I have kept the faith. Through the storms of life, I kept the faith. Through the trials of life, I kept the faith. Through sickness, I kept the faith. Amen. I thought about Jacob. I'm, I am closing, I promise. I thought about Jacob when I was studying this. How that when he wrestled with the Lord, and the Lord said, let me go. And he said, I ain't going to let you go. Did you bless me? We need that attitude about our faith. I ain't going to let go of my faith. No matter what happens, I'm going to hold it captive. I'm going to hold on with everything I've got. Keep your faith in Jesus today and there ain't no way you can lose. Amen? Hallelujah. You'll be a winner either way. Remain steadfast in your faith. Keep your faith in Him. Hallelujah. Someone else this morning have something before we go. <clears throat>